A long time in the making with outstanding results, Barmaids delivers yet another excellent skincare formula. Simple ingredients, quick absorption, it's a healthy skin choice. ICE Serum is the perfect daily nightly eye treatment. With nourishing and protective antioxidants, this lightweight formula absorbs easily into the skin to deliver stunning results. ICE Serum is a powerful combination of natural ingredients which encourages skin regeneration, leads to tightening and toned skin due to astringent qualities, and contains potent antioxidants which help to slow down the visible signs of aging. Hi and welcome to Knitting Blooms. My name is Tina, also known as Blooming Knitter, and this is episode number 77C, and this is my Rhinebeck recap. So, it is Wednesday, October 24th, and I debated on when I wanted to do this recap. I thought about waiting until next Saturday when I normally record. Then I thought, well, maybe everybody will be Ryan kept Ryan back <laughs> recapped out by then. So I'm just doing it today because I had de decided that I'm not going to show any knitting um, during this e episode because I think I'm going to have too much to talk about. <laughs> So I think it's going to be um, a reasonable length episode to begin with. And then if I try to tack on my knitting progress and FOs and such, um, the episode might be who knows how long. So if you're really not into the whole Rhinebeck um, recap and my stash haul, then you might just want to wait till Saturday's episode. But if you'd like to see what I got and hear about my um, trip to Rhinebeck, then stick around and uh, I'll let you, I'll fill you in. But it is Wednesday, it's after work, um, so you have me in my after work garb. Um, it's been a kind of a busy two days at back at work, but uh, the boss is back on vacation again t starting tomorrow, so I have two days of quiet at the office for the rest of this week. But let me get started with all of this Rhinebeck goodness. I have show notes. They are quite extensive, so I'm hoping that I don't miss something or jump around too much, but I had to make notes because I knew that if I didn't make notes on things that I wanted to talk about, I was going to forget. And the notes are kind of I wrote them down as they came to me, <laughs> so they're not in any specific order, and I didn't want to have to rearrange and number and stuff like that, so anyway. So as many of you know, I, we drove, my, my, uh, <laughs> see this is what you get when I record it after work. Uh, my friends and I, we left the Detroit area on Thursday morning, early, early Thursday morning. Um, I was picked up at around 6 o'clock, and then we went and picked Michelle up, and then we were on the road, on the highway, by about 6.30. And it took us over 12 hours to get there, and we, we didn't run into too much traffic, but there was a point that we were in traffic for about a half hour or so, maybe 45 minutes. And we did have stops for gas and food and what have you. We arrived into Rhinebeck. Actually, we stayed in Kingston, so we arrived into, Ki into Kingston. Um, I don't know. It was 6.30, 6.45, 7, somewhere between the 6.30 range and the 7.30 range. I don't know. We were just so excited at that point to be getting out of the car that we didn't really pay too much attention. And um, we did go, after we checked into our hotel, we just dropped our bags and then we went out to dinner in Kingston. We went to a restaurant called Stella's. I think it was Stella's. It was an Italian restaurant, which was very good. And um, we had a nice meal there. And then we walked around Kingston. And we had planned on going back at some point to walk around Kingston some more. But we were busy the rest of the weekend. On Friday, uh, if you have seen um, the other previous A and B um, episodes for episode 77 
you will have known that on Friday we went to a few of the local yarn stores and we got lost. So that was quite adventurous. And, uh, yeah, so we went to the yarn stores. They were nice yarn stores. They had, um, I mean, obviously mostly commercial yarns. And because we had come to Rhinebeck to shop, we were kind of, um, conservative with our spending at the shops only because none of this was the first time for us for Rhinebeck and so we didn't know what to expect. So when we were shopping at the at the stores we were very selective about what we were purchasing but um, all of the shops were very nice. Um, I have a couple of purchases from the stores that as I get to them I'll talk a little bit more about the shop. Um, but yeah, we had a lot of fun on, on, on Friday doing that. And Friday evening, we must have gone out to dinner. I don't know. <laughs> All the days are coming together. This is why I need notes. Anyway, so let's talk about the actual festival. Uh, Saturday morning, we got up, and um, when you have multiple people in a hotel room, you got to get up extra early so that everybody can get their shower and what have you and be ready to leave. We knew that we wanted to have breakfast before we went, so we got up, I think we were up at 5 or something like that. So we could be down at breakfast at 7 when our when our um, continental breakfast started. Actually, it was, it was called a continental breakfast, but at um, the Quality Inn in Kingston, they gave us a full breakfast. Um, it was cooked to order. We could have eggs, uh, pancakes, or waffles. So that was kind of nice. So you actually sit down for your meal, you order it, you tell them what you want, and then they go and make it for you right there. So that was really awesome. So we had a nice breakfast every morning. And then once we had our breakfast, we headed over to um, the festival. I think we pulled into the parking lot around 8.15 or so. Uh, we knew we wanted to get there early just so we could get in to get parking. I had a feeling that it was going to be hard to get in, but um, it wasn't too bad. So we got in and parked, and when, then we got into line. Bye, Sam. And um, there was actually quite a number of people waiting in line when we got there, so we weren't the only ones that were thinking about getting there early. And the doors opened at 9, and we just started shopping. Again, we didn't know what to expect. Um, we were just kind of, we kind of tried to decide where we were going to start on the, on the map, and... Then we just kind of went and just started in the in the buildings and just started walking around and looking at what 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 everybody had. Um, we did a lot of shopping. Not much knitting got took place this weekend though. Um, I expected to have a lot of car knitting time or a lot of time in the car knitting, uh, but I ended up driving. You know, I wouldn't say half, but probably about four hours um, going and coming home. And then there was always those times in between that um, you don't pick up your knitting right away. You're just chatting or what have you in the car. So, and then when we were at Rhinebeck, we, I was expecting, oh yeah, we'll get, we'll get the shopping done in the morning and we'll have all afternoon to sit and um, enjoy the festival and knit. That didn't happen. We were shopping almost from the moment that we arrived to the moment that we left. Uh, we went through the booths. On Saturday, we went through all the booths. And, and by the end of the day, we were kind of worn out. So some of the last booths that we went to, um, we didn't spend too much time in. We kind of just kind of looked at it really quick, kind of in passing. And if there was something that caught our eye right away, then we went into the booth, otherwise we just kind of zoomed, zoomed on past. But, um, Saturday, so that was, on Saturday, we, we saw the whole thing on Saturday. Well, at least we thought we saw the whole thing on Saturday. Um, I was looking at, um, Amy from Knitting in Circles pictures to yesterday, last night, and apparently there was a lot of things that we didn't see, but we saw a lot of stuff. So what I did when I when I started when we started going through the buildings was if I would if I saw something that I really really loved that I could not live without I bought it right then. 
if I saw something that was like, hmm, yeah, I'd like to purchase this, but I really want to see what else there is, because at that point, we had only been in a couple buildings, you know, I mean, you can't, you just never know what you're going to come across. So what I would do was I would take a picture of it with my cell phone and then make sure I take a picture of it with, or take a picture of the, the booth name so that I would remember I could go back through Saturday evening and look at my pictures and see, okay, I definitely want to go back and look at this or um, if I got something that was similar or different or whatever that I don't need to get that anymore, I could cross it off the list. So that's what I did a lot um, in the beginning. I took a lot of, I well, I didn't really take that many pictures, although. Um, but I, if there was something that I liked that I thought maybe I would go back to, then I did take a picture. And I also um, picked up business cards. I have a whole little bag full of business cards and um, little, if they had... Um, postcards or whatever that was on the table to remind me to go back. But the thing is, is I don't think anybody could go and get everything that they want. Um, and my thought was, if they have a website, then, and I can order stuff online, then if, I don't have to get it right this minute. And most places did have a website, but it's always fun to buy stuff right then. Uh, so, I have all all my little cards, and um, I will go back through them, and anything that I didn't purchase at Rhinebeck, I can, you know, put on my, my want list for future purchases. Um, so, yeah, so Saturday was crazy. There was a ton of people there on Saturday. Uh, I was... I knew there was going to be a lot of people, but it was kind of discouraging right at the beginning in the morning uh, because so many people were headed to the same area that we were. And getting in booths that we wanted to see were, were almost impossible. It was hard to get into some of the booths. The lines were immediately like, you know, half hour long. So we didn't, we didn't stand in any line. If a line was longer than... A few minutes we kind of either passed over the booth or just didn't pick up anything in that booth we ended up going back uh, Saturday afternoon to some of the booths that we missed in the morning that we weren't able to get into um, because it would the lines were just way too long I, I just I didn't want to waste my time standing in line when I figured that they probably wouldn't sell out or even if they did sell out we could always go back and order online. Uh, Sunday was a little bit um, less crazy. There was still a whole lot of people there, but you could get in the booths a little easier and be able to get a, get get in and move around. Because some of the booths were so packed with stuff that it was even hard to get in and move around. And I Saturday I had my backpack that I was keeping all my purchases in. And to try and maneuver around in the in the booths and not bump people with the bag or whatever it was it was a little difficult but we may do and it, it worked and like I said Sunday was um, a lot less crowded we met a ton of people it was so much fun to have people come up and say oh I watch your podcast and I really enjoy it and uh, I mean I know how many views I get and I get a decent amount of views but it's, you never really, you can't, it's hard to connect with people when you don't know who's behind on the other side of the camera. So it was fun to have people come up and, and, and recognize me and, uh, and just say hello and say that they enjoy the podcast and they don't ever want me to stop podcasting and that sort of thing. And that was, that was a lot of fun. I have to say that Although I might seem really outgoing on the podcast, I'm kind of a shy person and I don't like to, um, I guess I don't like to assume 
that people know who I am. And so unless somebody says, oh, you know, I know you or whatever, it's like, even if I recognize them, you know, like even the other podcasters, I don't know. I don't know who watches my show, you know, so I didn't know if the other podcasters would know who I was. And, you know, just walking up and, you know, them recognizing me and calling me by name and all that. That was, that was, that was a lot of fun, you know, just because they knew who I was too. So, but it was great to meet so many people. I wish I had had more time to sit down and talk to people. I felt like the podcaster meetup on Saturday was just so rushed. Like everybody wanted to be everywhere and podcasters were all scattered all over the place. So if you wanted to talk to them, you kind of had to go over to where they were. And there was a few people that I never even caught up with. I never caught up with Vicki from Dragonfly Soars. I saw her on the hill when they were taking a picture. I I didn't realize they were going to take a picture, but we were down at the bottom of the hill chatting with a few people, and I looked up the hill, and I saw the, everybody up there getting a picture, but I'm like, ah, I'm not going to run up there. They're already halfway done with it. But I saw her standing up there, and we were still in the middle of a conversation, and I thought, okay, I need to finish up the conversation so I can go snag her, and by the time we finished up our conversation, I looked for her in the crowd, and she was already already gone and unfortunately we were not able to meet up um after that but and there was other podcasters too that i i had um downloaded new podcast and and everything was trying to catch up with everybody but there were still other podcasters that i didn't i didn't meet up with um that i was hoping to meet up with but you know there's always next year and other events and what have you but it was a lot of fun meeting everybody and just I've already thought about next year maybe we should do um, a podcaster meetup either outside of Rhinebeck or outside of the, um, the, the, the shopping times. Because I know that a lot of people, they didn't want to waste a lot of their time at a meetup when they could be shopping. Uh, so I was thinking that maybe we should get together, the podcasters should get together and rent a conference room somewhere at a hotel or wherever close by so that everybody who wants to come and do a podcaster meetup we can do it in the evening after after the festival or whatever i just thought that was a good idea i'm gonna i'm gonna look into you know maybe organizing something like that um because i i just like i said i really felt it was kind of rushed and we didn't get to talk to everybody we wanted to and Nobody really wanted to stick around and hang out when they could be shopping. So what else? Um, I did wear my Rhinebeck sweater for all of 45 minutes on Sunday. It was a little bit cooler on Sunday than it was on Saturday, so I thought that I was going to be able to get away with it. I put it on in the morning and standing out in the line waiting to get in to the festival on Sunday morning. It was chilly and I was glad to have that nice warm sweater. But once we got into the festival and we were walking around, I was very ready to take it off. So about 45 minutes in, I was like, okay, I'm done with the sweater. I need to change my clothes. Luckily I had brought back up clothing uh, because I knew it was gonna get too warm. So I did bring a just a long sleeve t-shirt that I threw on. And the sweater went in the car, so I can say I actually wore my Rhinebeck sweater at Rhinebeck, but only for about 45 minutes. Um, what else? Oh, the food! The food was amazing. I, you know, you watch previous um, Rhinebeck episodes, and everybody talks about the food. Well, we ate a lot. Um, Saturday, we had the artichoke French, which everybody raved about, which was awesome. Um, actually, I think we had that at like 10.30 in the morning or something there about, maybe 11 o'clock. But the line was short, and we had heard that, you know, in years past, the line gets really long. So we saw a short line. We said, it's right here. We're right here. Let's get it now so we don't have to stand in a long line. That was awesome. On Saturday, we also had um, a cream puff, which again, the line was short when we walked by, and we were like, hey, let's get it, we're here. Uh, I don't think 
I think we all ended up, me, uh, Michelle, Margaret, and I all ended up getting a cream puff, which I think we could have shared one. I think I ate probably not even a quarter of mine, and then it went in the garbage because it was right before the Rhinebeck meetup, and I could not hold my buttons and my, I got a, I got a, a cream puff and a coffee. I couldn't hold the buttons, drink my coffee, and eat my cream puff and talk to people and everything. So I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I can't do it. It's going in the garbage. It was really good. But next time, that's definitely something that is for sharing. Hmm. What else do I want to talk to you about about the event before I get into my whole stash? Um, we also had on Sunday, we got, I no, I think on Saturday we got the cotton candy, the maple cotton candy. Um, I didn't actually open mine until we were on the drive home. Sunday we had the cider and donuts. We also got kettle corn on Saturday and Sunday or Saturday, I can't even remember now, we had the apple crisp. So we did eat quite a bit. Um, I didn't get fried dough. I actually prefer, um funnel cakes over like an elephant ear or fried dough so I wasn't too disappointed because if it was funnel cake absolutely I would have had the funnel cake but we forewent the fried dough because we had been eating like crazy at every other meal so I decided that I can live without the fried dough this year so it was awesome though if you have never been to Rhinebeck Make a plan. Start saving now because it is so much fun. I mean, at first I was thinking, oh, I don't need to go every year. But it was so much fun that I almost want to go every year. And there's no reason why I can't go every year. I might not be able to spend like I spent this year, but uh, maybe once I, now that I've, I've gone through it once, I can be a little bit more conservative next time but it was a lot of fun we had so much fun the 24 hours that we spent driving in the car to get there totally totally worth it totally worth it it was 12 hours there 12 hours home it was worth it we're um, for next year though we're we are thinking about uh, breaking up the breaking up the drive driving Part of the way the first day, staying at a hotel, and then driving the rest of the way the second day, rather than trying to cram all 12 hours into one day, because 12 hours was hard in the car. So we are planning on doing some different stuff next year. So let me get into all of my purchases. And there's a lot. I Saturday, I didn't think I had bought that much, and I think I bought most of this stuff on Sunday or on Friday because I bought some stuff at the yarn stores and um, I did spend my entire allotted budget and then a little bit more but what I, w I do want to preference preference pref whatever <laughs> what I do want to say um, before I get into all this is that you have to remember I don't have children, and except for five cats that do obviously take a bit of money to support. Uh, but I don't have children. I have a, a good job. Um, I, I'm not like a fashionista. I don't have to have the, the top of the line clothes or anything like that. This knitting and spinning is my hobby. And this is where I spend my mad money. I don't, I don't spend a lot of money on clothes. I don't spend a lot of money anywhere else than on, on knitting stuff. So when I have, I separate my money out and every week a certain amount of money goes into my mad money account. And if I have my money, if I have money in it, why can't I spend it on stuff that I want? So let's start with what we have. Um, I did also see that, um, I was looking on, on the Rhinebeck group today, um, to find out when Rhinebeck 
2013 is, and I was told that it was in the back part of this flyer. So next year, actually that's not it. Um, that's August something. I don't think that's when it is. Well, I'll have to look. There, I, I'm told that it's October, um, the, always the third weekend in October. So I'll have to double check because this is definitely not it. This says August 20th through 25th. Anyway, so let's get into, oops, into all my purchases. And I'm going to go through these in no particular order. And I will warn you, there's a lot of stuff. And, and it's definitely not an order of the order that I purchased it because I had it all packed in my backpack and I just took it out and laid it on the table. And so there will be a little bit of crinkling because I have some things in plastic bags and what have you. Anyway, I'm going to start with the little alpaca or llama or whatever he is that I picked up for Steve because, you know, last week if you saw the bear, you know he likes stuffed animals and he's a little soft little little guy. So I bought him for Steve. I saw I saw him in um I think it was Red Maple booth. It's the it was the booth that had the Rhinebeck bingo stuff. And um and I saw him in there and I thought he just needs to have a little alpaca. And actually he was asking me for it last night and I told him that he couldn't have it until I recorded because I would forget to get it back from him. So that's one of the things I purchased. Uh, let's see what's in this bag. And I might remember where I purchased these things, and I might not. Um, I did purchase some stuff from Fiber Optic. This is one thing that I purchased. It is the Footnotes yarn, and it is in the colorway uh, Moon Over Miami. It is blues. It's like a, a tealy blue. I'm not sure how, how well the color will come out. You're never really sure. But it's beautiful. I'm trying to kind of get out of my pink green um, <laughs> I can't think. <laughs> Getting the same color yarn all the time. So I, I try to get some things that are a little different, that are a little bit out of my comfort zone, but still fun and exciting. So I picked up this one. I did um, pick up a, a skein of this at Stitches last year. I got it in green, um, but I haven't used it yet. But I just thought I needed more. So I got that. And I'm going to try not to bend over, but I dropped that bag on the floor. And then I bought this, which is from Page, Pagewood Farms. And I'm not sure if they had a booth there or if, I, um, if it was in somebody else's booth. But it's Pagewood Farms. And it is purples and tans. And it's just a lovely bit of goodness. And there's the Pagewood Farms. So that is another skin of yarn. I thought about buying um like looking for specifically looking for a sweater's weight of yarn but i already have a number of sweaters worth of yarn in my stash that i decided that i'm gonna just buy the single skeins i'm good with that i also went to the loop um booth and i purchased a bat um, a loop bat but i um uh, I'll show you that in a minute. But I also purchased this fluff. Uh, after buying the loop bat, I was talking to Diane, and she asked me, Diane of the Knittables podcast, she asked me if I had gotten any of the fluff, and I'm like, no. And she's like, oh, you should really get some. So I thought, okay, well, I'll go and check it out and see if there's anything that I that I like. And I saw this. And again, it's dark colors. It's um, more muted than what I'm used to, but... It looked fun, and it has a little bit of sparkle in it, and I think it'll be fun to spin. So it'll be it'll be something a little bit different than what what I'm used to. And that was from Loop, and here is my Loop bat that I bought. And I told myself, oops, hold on, 
I told myself I wasn't going to buy a loop bat only because I haven't spent the two loop bats that I haven't spun the two loop bats that are in my stash. And I thought I really needed to spin the, those first before I bought another one. But then as I was going through the booth, I saw this one and I thought it was pretty and I thought I just needed to have it. So I purchased it. So there, there's that. And it is um, Merino, Nylon, and Angelina. So perfect, exactly the type of fibers that I like to work with. The Angelina, not so much, but there doesn't it doesn't look like there's that much angelina in here um and i like the colors so i think it'll be perfect and i think this is um it says wildflowers on here i don't know i think she she names all of her bats even if they're one-offs but it's very pretty and it's purple and it'll be fun to spin okay then let's see what's in this bag <laughs> Okay, okay, this is what I purchased. I purchased um, okay, I can't remember where I purchased that one, but this one I purchased at um, the Perfect Blend. The Perfect Blend was one of the local yarn shops, and it was a very nice little shop. They they have um, tea and yarn and it was a quaint little shop we went to that one on friday and i purchased this uh this jill draper yarn in greens and and uh blue so that was very cool i saw some other yarn that i thought about getting but again it was worsted weight and i didn't want to buy for a whole sweater so i thought this would be good for socks or a shawl or whatever I decide to get to make into it. So it is sock weight. And it is awesome. And I just remembered where I got this yarn from. This yarn is, um, it says Hudson Valley Sheep and Wool Company. And it is a lace weight alpaca and I think silk. Yep, alpaca and silk. And it's 744 yards. And I got this at the um, Sheep and Wool Company. This is where we went Friday evening. They had an open house. And, um, yeah, that's where we went Friday evening. <laughs> I knew we went somewhere. We went so many places, it's so hard to, for, uh, hard to remember what, um, what we did. But this yarn is so soft. After making my... Uh, that mystery shawl that I just finished with the beads, the lace, uh, alpaca, and silk from Highland Handmaids. I just, I just loved that yarn, and I thought, well, if I find some other yarn that's similar, then I might pick some up. And I found this, and it is a very nicely variegated yarn. And I don't know if you'll be able to get that feel on the camera, but it's very nice. Okay, so I also at um, Fiber Optic picked up this grade of fiber, and she had a lovely even star in her booth. And I asked her, uh, "How do you do? Does she ever um, dye larger quantities or what?" And she said that what people have done is to take the um, the braid and spin it and then take a second braid and spin it and then two ply it to get the yardage that you would need for an even star or a large circular shawl. I bought this one on Saturday afternoon. The first time through the fiber opti optic booth was just cram packed so we just walked right by that booth. But on Saturday afternoon when we were going back and looking at certain things uh, the booth wasn't as busy, so we st she, we stopped in and I purchased this. But then on Sunday, I went back and I got a second one, so I could do that whole ply or spin it and then two ply it with each other. And um, hopefully, I will get quite a bit of yardage and be able to to do something. I don't think I'm going to be doing an even star with it, but because I'm working on the even star now, but. 
if I like the even star, I might decide that I need to have another large circular shawl. Okay, what else did I get? Okay, this was actually my first purchase at the festival. Um, I don't know what booth. It was the uh, Persimmons Tree Farm. And it is, it looks like it's showing up on the camera as really burgundy, but it's, it really is a pinkish, pinkish color. Um, it's more pink than, than burgundy or rust colored. But it's very pretty, and it is 560 yards, and it's a fingering weight. And I thought that I would make um, some type of shawl with it, or I could make socks. But it is um, quite a bit, so uh, quite a bit of yardage. It might even be lace weight yarn, because it is only 4 ounces, and it's 560 yards. It might be considered lace weight. I'll have to do a... Um, a wraps per inch just to, to determine or maybe I can look it up on Ravelry and see what it's what it's listed as it's called P toes superwash but it is a lovely bit of goodness and also on Saturday afternoon um, for Saturday morning we walked right by into the world booth because there, I, you could even get into the booth. It was so cram-packed. And the line was already two, two booths down from, from Into the World. So, again, we decided to skip that booth at the moment and um, come back to it. And Saturday afternoon when we were in that same building, I think Into the World and Fiber Optic were all in the same building. So we stopped in there, and I got some of her yarn. I mean, I love spinning her fiber, and I've never had the yarn. So I got um, some of the Superwash Merino and Cashmere Nylon uh, base in this. The, it's green and purple, and then there's some some like kind of aqua color underneath there and it is so cool and I'll have to see what these little um, barcodes are all about I'll have to scan it on my phone that'll be fun and there is that and then I also got this one which is it has a gray it has some some turquoise and some peachy color and then there's some some um, like burgundy underneath there or whatever and it's very pretty and again I this is the um the superwash nylon base again I don't really know what I'm gonna make with any of these things but I mean I know I can do shawls I know I can do socks there's so many things you can do with one skein of fingering weight yarn that I wasn't really worried about buying something that I won't use if I liked the color I decided I was going to buy the yarn. Okay. Let me talk about this. <laughs> this is what I purchased at the Country Wool. I think that's what it was called. This is the, um, the store that we got lost trying to find. And I just purchased some clover needles because you could never have too many of those clover needles. And then she had a, yes, it is the country wool. It's on 59 Spring Road in Hudson, New York. When we originally went, we put in Spring Street, and it took us all the way through the city of Hudson and into a residential area, and it was not the right place. So if you haven't seen episode 77A, the Friday Adventures at Rhinebeck, then go check it out. You might find it a little hilarious. It was quite hilarious to us. But she had these little kits for um, polishing and cleaning your wheel. And I thought that was kind of cool. Now, Kagi TM, everybody knows that Kagi TM and I did a tutorial last year from, Knit, from um, Knitopia uh, about cleaning the wheel. So I knew how to clean the wheel, but I, I just thought that it would be neat to have somebody else's perspective on cleaning the wheel and the little tools that she uses so she has one of these little 
I don't know. They're like scrubbies. That's all I can think of what they are. They're not a sponge, but it's a scrubby. And then this is a piece of felt. So I don't think... I'm trying to look and see if she has... No, she, there's no directions in here on how to do it. But, but it's a piece of felt and the scrubby. It also comes with... Um, oil, which is really what I needed. I needed some more oil because I had just finished off um, one of my spinning wheel oils. So when I saw the oil, I was just going to get that. And then I'm like, hmm, I think I'll get the whole little kit. And she also has this bunny wax. It's wood care. Um, it's kind of like the, um, what is that? Wood beams. So, I thought it would be good. But like I said, mostly my main focus was to get the oil. I could have just bought the oil by itself, but I wanted to support the local yarn shop. So, that was that little kit. And then she also had some handmade soaps. And this soap smells so good. This is goat's milk soap, and it's in the Heather fragrance. And I am real um, sensitive to fragrances. So, but this one, it smells really, really good. It really does. And I'm not sure, I'm, I don't know if she sells online or not, but definitely something to look into. Okay, so now I'm running out of room of where to put stuff. All right, let's pull this one out. I have everything scattered around me and on my lap still. All right, this was Gail's Art. I went into Gail's Art on Saturday, and I just, it was one of the last booths that we went to uh, one of, into, in one of the last buildings, and so I didn't spend too much time in it on Saturday, but I did make a note that I wanted to go back on Sunday, and when I went back on Sunday, I did make some selections of things I wanted to purchase. I purchased um, this skein, and it's, it's her superwash base, superwash and nylon base, and it's in the deep blue sea colorway. It is gorgeous. Again, I'm trying to stay away from the pinks a little bit. So I'm, it looks like I'm gravitating to the blues and purples. Which are fine. I like bright colors. And it really doesn't matter what color it is as long as it's bright. And I also wanted to try out some of her fiber. So I got some Polar Silk in the Proud Peacock colorway. I think I had... Um, at one point when I was in the booth, I had like three different colors of fiber in my hand, and this is the one that I decided to get. I think I had, um, I don't know which ones I had, but there was three different ones. Anyway. Um, and then on Sunday, after shopping for a bit, we went back to Into the World and I got some fiber. Because sat Saturday afternoon, I only got the yarn. And on Sunday, I got this, which is Cloud Nine. And, oops, again, not my typical colors, but very, very pretty, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to spin. And this is the um, Polworth Silk. I seem to like the Polworth, Polworth, Polworth Silk, and um, I've been buying a lot of that lately. I got, I got really addicted to it when I was spinning the, um, the Franklin from No Makers, and I haven't been able to get... A colorway that I really really like from Gnome Acres in that um, in that fiber lately so everywhere else I've been picking it up and this one is also Pol Polar Silk. So that's that. Um, this I will save because that is not a buying bag purchase but it was in my mail when I came home <laughs> so I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, this I had to get. This was one of those tents that was outside of a building. Um, they had all sorts of uh, bags of yarn. And I saw this colorway. And I thought it was beautiful. I mean, obviously, it's pink. It's bright pink. And I think the, I, the color is just... I think it's washed out. The light is too bright in here today or something. But then I saw the color. And it was gorgeous. It's the bright bright pink, fuchsia pink, and then I saw the name, Blooming Pink. Uh, hello, how could I not buy that? 
I mean, and it's a sweaters with yarn. I don't know what, um, I don't know if it says on here. It says, um, Shelby yarn, mercerized Egyptian cotton. It doesn't tell me how many, um, yards per ball there are, um, She has an eBay store. Yeah, I don't know. I just know it's Egyptian cotton. And it's pink. It's pretty. I love it. I'm sure I can make a sweater. I'm. It's fingering weight yarn, and which is fine because I like to work with fingering weight. I'm not so sure about making a sweater with fingering weight cotton that has no give to it. But it will work. I will find something wonderful to make with it. So that's that. And um, I also got some project bags. I was hunting for project bags while I was at Rhinebeck. And I did buy a few. I purchased a three bags full bag. This is, I think this was a medium bag. Um, most of the bags that I saw were small or medium. And I think I would like to have a larger bag, too. Um, I might have to see if I can go on the Three Bags Full website and get a larger bag. Um, because I like this size bag for socks or what have you, but for much more than that, you can't really... I mean, socks and maybe a shawl or what have you, it would work. But you can't really get much more in there than that. But that is a really cute bag. I like how it's how it's made. It's very nicely made. And at the same at the same booth, which was Dirty Water Dye Works. I didn't buy any yarn at that place, but that was one of the places that I picked up their card and I am planning on um, making a purchase online. Uh, I did see some some yarns that I really like there. Margaret actually um, bought a full sweater's worth of yarn there. And um, I will definitely be checking out their, their shop. But in addition to the bag, I also bought this adorable, and I don't even know if I'll be able to show it, this adorable little sheep um, stitch marker. It is so cute. I just can't get over how cute it is. I can't wait to put it on my on my project as my um, like my when I'm knitting in the round as my as my row marker for the beginning of the round. It is so much fun, and I don't want to lose it. And I also got a Jessaloo bag. I was looking for Jessaloo, and um, I'm glad I saw it because I know that she mentioned that she wasn't going to be she wasn't going to have her own booth, but there was a booth that was selling her bags. And I picked up this lovely bag. That would be my phone ringing. So hang tight for just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. I'm glad I stopped to take that phone call because it was kind of kind of important. Um, it was a friend of mine who has a cat that's been in the neighborhood for a while. And um, she thinks it was just a stray or abandoned or something, but I guess today it came up to her and um, she gave it some food and it seemed like it was really hungry and she just is heartbroken that she's leaving it outside, but she doesn't, she, she's um, recently had some losses with, with animals. They've passed away and she's not ready to commit herself to another animal right now and she was wondering what she would do and I'm actually in the same boat because there's a an adorable little um, Siamese kitty that's um, by my office that has been coming up lately and I took some food in and have been feeding her and she wears a collar so I thought well she's got to live right close by um, but today I got the phone number off the collar and I called the number and it's disconnected so I'm hoping that I wrote down the, the phone number wrong and I'll what net when I see her again I'll get look at it again because I she didn't let me touch her. She wouldn't let me get close enough. But while she was having her little snack today, I kind of looked down and tried to get the phone number. And I'm like I said, I'm hoping that I got the wrong number. But anyway, it's so it's so sad to, to see animals outside and not being taken care of, or if they've gotten lost from from their home or whatever. And um, I just 
it, it's heartbreaking to see them. And plus, here in Michigan, it gets cold. And it's going to start getting cold soon. And I just, I'm going to feel so bad if that cat is outside. And I came home and I told Steve tonight. And he's like, don't even think about getting another cat. He told me I could, he could, the only way he, I could bring home another cat is to get rid of Cody and Crystal. Which are my two anxiety cats that have issues. But that's not going to happen because nobody's going to. Nobody's going to want them and deal with their issues, so I guess I just have to get over it. Anyway, I got this cute little kitty, speaking of kitties, bag from um, Jessa Lou. And again, this is another smaller bag. I would have liked to have gotten a larger bag, and I think I'm going to see if I can snag an update from Jessa Lou because I would like to get a larger bag as well. I don't know um, what size this was, but I think this is a smaller size. I'm pretty sure that she had another size up in the in the um, booth at Rhinebeck, but um, they didn't have this this fabric, and there was nothing that really striked my fancy. So I got this one, and it again, it's a small bag, but it would be good for a pair of socks or a small project if I'm if I ever am so inclined to make little mini mochi or whatever. It would be a good bag for that. So that was my second uh, bag purchase, and um, actually, and then I bought I bought the um, the Rhinebeck um, the Rhinebeck bag. I thought about buying a T-shirt, but I would get so much more use out of a um, tote bag versus a T-shirt. I mean, I wear T-shirts, but usually I like to wear T-shirts that have nothing on the front. I mean, this is my Knittopia T-shirt, but. Um, usually I don't wear a t-shirt with any graphic or anything, so I just thought I would get a better use out of a tote bag, and it is, it is a good size bag. I mean, I can use it for a knitting bag, or I can use it for, you know, whatever. It's got a nice deep, a deep bottom and everything, so. This was the longest line that we stood in. I think we had to stand in line for about, about a half hour to get this, but I knew that this was something that I couldn't just go online and purchase after the fact. So this was important to, to all of us. All of us ended up um, getting a tote bag. Um, so we all stood in line, Margaret, Michelle, and I. And then on Sunday, I think it was Sunday, I bought this bag. Um, well, first of all, the colors. I mean, how could I not get a pink and green plaid bag? But what I thought was so interesting, and it's got a pink lining, but the most interesting part was that it came up. I mean, it's the bag, and then it comes up, and then you can have the drawstring on it. I thought that was so ingenious. I loved it. It's got pockets on either side, on the outside. And it's got this cute little clip. And this is from um, Silver Moon Farms, or Silver Moon Farm Fiber Arts. And they have a website called Silver Moon Farm. And I almost bought some yarn at the same place, and um, but I didn't buy any yarn. But it's got a nice, I mean, it's got a, look how deep the bottom is. I mean, it's, it's very, very nice. I mean, this is a nice size sweater bag. Very, very cool very deep bottom. I mean, it's it's big. Look how big it is. And I and I just loved that it had this thing at the top where you could cinch it because typically I don't like a bag that doesn't have a clo some kind of closure on the top unless I'm going to just put my other knitting bags in the bag, but this was very cool. And I can and I don't have to use it like that. I can just tuck it back down in there like it was to have it like that. But it's very, very cool. And then Michelle pointed out that they also had a project size bag as well. And this again has a nice, a nice deep bottom or a nice wide bottom. And yes, it does have it has a pocket in it as well. A little pocket. And it is a cinch bag. So I just thought that was so cool. And again, how could I pass up a bag that was pink and green? 
I mean, hello. But that, but and again, that was from Silver Moon Fiber Arts. Awesome bag. So I got a number of project bags, and I still need to go back to the thread on the group of the bags that everybody's talking about on that group. So I might have some more project bags coming soon too, and I think I need to get some more. Um, Another Knitting's My Bag bag. I think I want to get another large bag from Knitting's My Bag. And then the next thing that I bought, well, not really the next thing. It's one of the last things that I bought. But I bought this um, Cherie kit. It is to take, you take any type of fabric, old fabric that's not being used. You cut it on the bias. I think it's the cut it on the bias. And you cut it into strips. And then you crochet the pieces together to make hot pads or rugs or just about anything. Um, both Michelle and I bought this and she has instructions in here. I'm not going to take it all out. But it's, it was very, very interesting. And I watched, I watched her do the demonstration when Michelle bought the kit. And I thought it was cool. And then I was walking by again and I'm thinking, oh, you know what? I probably am going to go to their website and order some. And then I'm like, well, I might as well just buy it while I'm here. So that'll be that'll be very interesting to, to, uh, to make. To be able to shred up some fabric and make hot pads. Just something different, something interesting. And the last thing that I purchased at Rhinebeck was a golden spindle. Um, you know, Diane talks about how much she loves the golden spindles, and they are beautiful, they are expensive, um, but I also like to spin lace weight yarn, or fingering weight, and you need a lightweight spindle. So I was really concerned when I went there, and most of their spindles are... Um, heavier because they have the gold the um the the um the brass ring around them but i found this one that was um it is a cherry pinwheel in walnut and it's only 0.4 ounces it's a, a tiny little thing and it's it's open at the top to save on the weight but i thought i'm gonna try it and if I really, really, really love it, then I might consider buying a slightly heavier one. I don't know that I will go much heavier than one ounce. This is less than half an ounce. But um, really, I just, I like to spin thin. And you have to have a lightweight spindle to spin thin. I mean, you can spin um, thin on heavier spindles, but then the weight, not only the weight of the spindle, but then you have the weight of the fiber, and then it just gets too heavy to spin to spin thin. So I'm going to try this out. I did try and start spinning a little bit of what I'm spinning um, right now on it, but um, I'm trying to do that Navajo ply on the Navajo ply on the fly, and I'm still not. Um, really comfortable with it yet so trying to spin on a new spindle and do a new technique was not the right thing to do so I decided to take it back off of this spindle and just keep it on the other spindle but I um I if if I like this spindle I can definitely see it being an addiction to get more spindles although I really haven't been spindle spinning all that much um mostly I've been spinning on my wheels. I really like spinning on the wheels, and I might not spin on my spindles all that much, so why invest the money on um, spindles when I could invest the money on, say, um, a Hanson's e-spinner, <laughs> which I also tried at Rhinebeck. But um, I do have the one that Steve built me. It's much louder than the Hanson's e-spinner, but it works, and... Maybe next year I will buy Hanson Z Spinner. We'll just have to wait and see. So the last item, which was not a Rhinebeck purchase, but which came while I was at Rhinebeck, is my Into the World Fiber from my Into the World Fiber Club. 
So if you are in the club and you have not received your shipment and you don't want to see it, then look away. But here it is. It is all wonderful shades of blue with a little bit of this kind of um, taupey color. It's just lovely. And it is merino. And I just can't imagine it not being fun to spin. So that is my Into the World, and I have no idea what the name is, how to pronounce it. So, But there it is. And that's my Into the World fiber. And now I have fiber and project bags and everything all around me. I did not calculate how many yards I bought. I don't want to know just yet, but I hope to have all of this stuff into my stash before I go to Knitting in the Mitten because I might buy more there. <laughs> and I'll need to know what I have. So that's it. That's my Rhinebeck, my Rhinebeck stories. And uh, like I said before, if you have a chance to go to Rhinebeck, go. I have really been enjoying all of the podcaster recaps of Rhinebeck this week. And I'm hoping to see more and listen to more as the week goes on. And, um, I was thinking about trying to compile a list of the ones that I've seen, but I'm sure you guys are already watching all the podcasts and seeing all the recaps. And my battery is dying, and I forgot to plug it in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, say goodbye, and I will talk to you again on Saturday. So bye for now.